If you enjoy the content and want to see more exclusive, unreleased videos along with additional perks, consider joining my Patreon. It would mean the world and would help me create more content for you all to enjoy. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's great to see you all again. If I were to ask you what Lightroom development panel you use the least or know the least about, what would your answer be? My guess is that the majority of you would say the calibration panel way down at the bottom of the development module. And if you would have asked me a few months ago, I would have probably had the same answer, and that's even if I would have thought about it in the first place. And I think we as humans tend to find it hard to try something or use something that we aren't good at or don't know much about. And for all that it's worth, the name doesn't really help give you an idea of what it does either. But with all that being said, I believe this to be one of, if not the most powerful color grading tool within Lightroom. So today we are going to take a deep dive into what exactly this is, what it does, and then I'm going to show you exactly how I started using this tool on every one of my photos. So I hope you all enjoy. <music> First off, let's go over what exactly this panel is and what it was designed for in the first place. Well, as the name suggests, it is used to calibrate your colors depending on what camera brand you use. For example, every time you take a photo, your camera has to go through each pixel and figure out what color it's going to assign for that pixel. And when doing that, every camera brand has a threshold of where exactly the line is when deciding what color to choose. One brand may say that one pixel should be yellow where another brand would classify it as green. So that's where the calibration panel comes in. It allows you to tune your colors to essentially let you pick what pixels are gonna be what colors. Let's look at this rainbow gradient, for example. So when you're looking at it like this, if I were to ask you where the exact color of green is, you may say around this area, but someone else might say it's over here that's where the gray area is. So when I slide the hue of the green channel all the way to the right, it's gonna make all of those green pixels pick a certain color. In this case, it's cyan. However, if I were to slide it all the way to the left, it's gonna make all those green pixels turn yellow. As you can see, the threshold for green has turned into more yellow. This also gives you a very nice roll off for each color as well. So there's a smoother transition between colors. So let's try it with the red primary next. So if I were to slide all the way over to the orange channel, it's gonna make all of the red pixels that are in the image go towards orange. And if I were to slide it all the way to the left, it's gonna make all those red pixels turn into pink. Now for the blue channel, it's gonna be sliding it to the left. It's gonna make all those blue into cyan and then, or aqua, and then all the way to the right, it's gonna make all those blue pixels into purple. So as you can see now, instead of a whole rainbow, it looks like we just have orange, green, and purple. So how can we use this to our advantage more than just calibrating our colors? Let's go to this first example. So this is an image that I have more of a fall foliage shot and maybe I want some of those greens and yellows to pop a little bit more than what they are. So let's go to the green primary channel and let's crank it all the way to the right to see what that's gonna do. As you can see, that turns the greens more into cyan and kind of mutes the colors in general. But if we went all the way to the left, it's gonna make those yellows and greens really pop and turn those greens a little bit more into yellow. Now, if we go and mess around with the rest of the sliders, let's turn the red up to yellow. Let's just crank all these sliders up. As you can see, now it's making each pixel pick a certain color. So let's reset this. And one of the ways people use this a lot on social media or was a popular editing style is they would crank this blue primary channel all the way to the left. And as you can see, that gives you the nice teal and orange look that you are used to seeing a lot in that you're used to seeing a lot in social media or at least used to. So let's go back and let's put a realistic calibration edit on this photo. Something that you wanna keep in mind is that each camera brand is going to be different. So I'm shooting on Sony. So what I've learned is that the green primary channel is what is gonna be the best looking for my taste when adjusting the calibration section for my photos. So let's go to the green primary channel and I'm gonna crank up the saturation a little bit. As you can see, it's not cranking up the saturation of the whole image. It's just cranking up the saturation of the green primary channel. So the green pixels, and then it also rolls off. Now it just makes your image have that little extra pop in it. So let's change the, I want it to be more of a fall foliage shot. So we have the hue go maybe towards yellow a little bit. And as you can see, just making adjustments to the green primary section, here's what it did. 
So let's turn this off and then on, off and on. And then I might actually keep this around the zero mark and just turn the saturation up of the green primary channel. And it just gives it that extra little pop. So let's go to another photo that has a lot of green in it. So this is a, obviously a foliage shot that I feel like the greens can just, again, just pop a little bit more and maybe the shade of green, I want it to be more green. Uh, this is a little bit of a muted green. And so this has all of the edits put on, but let's crank the saturation of the green channel. As you can see, it is just bringing saturation so nicely into those specific colors. As you can see, just turning up the green saturation. And then if I were to bring this down a little bit, it would turn those into more of a yellow green. And then I bring it up and it would turn it a little bit more into a cyan green. I think I'm going to keep it pretty even. But as you can see, all the blue pixels within the green pixels, if we turn the blue primary channel up or down, it's just going to change those in a super nice, smooth way. So next, let's look at a shot that has less greens in it, but has lots of blues and reds and pinks in it. As you can see, Originally, this image is pretty dull. I mean, the colors are there, but I feel like we could just add a little bit of a pop to it. I keep using that word pop, but I really think that's the right word to use in this context because it just makes the, the colors hit you a little bit more and stand out a little bit more. So let's go to the red primary channel and maybe turn those reds into a little bit more pink and then raise the saturation up a little bit and just doing that tiny little bit of adjustment go from that to that and as you can see it just blends the pinks in the sky super well with each other let's go to the blue primary turn that up maybe a little bit and then maybe bring it towards purple a little bit more and as you can see like I said it's just such a smooth transition between colors and I may go up even though I adjusted the saturation of the blue primary I might go up here to the blue saturation in the HSL menu and just turn it down a little bit just so it's not too overpowering. But as you can see, that made a huge difference of just bringing up the calibration section. And as you can see that just adjusting the calibration section after you're editing is making such a huge difference. Now let's go to another image that has a little bit more cyans, a little bit more blues in it and greens. This ocean shot, to me, it looks pretty dull and I'm not super sold on the color of the water in this image. So let's go to the blue primary channel and let's crank it back and forth. And as you can see, if I go to the right, it's going to bring the more of those cyans and purples out. Or if I go to the left, it's going to be way more tropical and have that nice blue, rich cyan aqua color in the wave. If we adjust the greens a little bit more, as you can see, if we bring that up, even more, it gives you that perfect color of the waves that I love seeing in the ocean. So let's bring the saturation maybe up a little bit. Saturation, you can crank these back and forth just to see what they do. Honestly, a lot of the times you're not gonna know exactly what it's gonna do to your image if you don't just wiggle those sliders back and forth. So that is the best way to see what it's gonna do to your image. Let's bring those reds to a little bit more yellow. And as you can see, that's actually affecting the image a little bit different than what you may have thought. Because if we're bringing it to the orange, it's bringing a lot of those greens out. If we go to the right, it's just making that really nice dark blue color. So let's look at what a before and after of just the calibration section did here. So there is before, there is after, there is before, and there is after. Just a huge difference and it really brings that color. Obviously I would play th with this a little bit more. I'm just trying to show you exactly what each thing does to each specific color. Let's look at one more example here where there's lots of reds, greens, and blues in the image. Now, if we were to just crank one of these sliders, like the blue, like we did in the last one, as you can see, it's affecting way too much of the image and it's just way too much. So I'm just gonna go through each primary channel, adjust the hue as needed. Maybe I wanna bring those flowers a little bit more to pink, and then maybe the greens more towards green, but also bring up the saturation and then the blues more towards green and pink as you can see it's just going to be green and pink there with the hue or that turquoise and orange look but i really want the greens and the pinks to pop out so let's do that and then maybe go up 
and decrease the saturation of certain colors that we want. Just like this, you can adjust it, rock it back and forth, see what exactly it does. But as you can see, let's go down to the calibration section. If we turn this off and then on, it can be really subtle and you definitely can go overboard with it. But honestly, in my experience, it's almost better to try to do more right away. Take a break from your photos and come back and see how it looks. Because a lot of the times when I don't use the calibration section, I'll really, really like how my photos edited. I'll go away for a while and I'll come back and I'll realize that the saturation and contrast of each color is really dull. And at first I didn't really know what to do. But once I started using the calibration section and learning how it affects each image and each color depending on the brand of camera you have it really just took my photos to the next level so i really hope you all did learn something from this week's video and something that you can go learn a little bit more about and play around with because that's going to be the best way to learn but if you didn't know already i did start a discord server for all of the community to come together share photos give feedback and then i will also be holding monthly contests to get your photos featured but other than that if you could subscribe to my weekly newsletter for weekly updates i would greatly greatly appreciate it and then for daily updates like and follow my facebook page but other than that again i hope you all enjoyed thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one